when it comes to the battle of machine learning frameworks nothing is as intense as the clash between tensorflow and pytorch many people have difficulty choosing one over the other especially beginners who is just entering the ml domain they gets confused at choosing the best framework and the content on the internet is either biased to one of these frameworks or it is overwhelming so i am going to clear your doubts once and for all the facts i'll be showing in this video are backed by experiments and papers along with the latest trends from popular sites such as hugging face papers with code weights and biases and cvp or papers etc coming to the brief intro to both the frameworks tensorflow is released back in 2015 by google that was the era when cafe and mxnet are ruling the ml community it is developed by google whereas pytorch released a year later it was actually torch pytorch was released much later than google it is developed by facebook which is now called meta ai recently pytorch has become the pytorch foundation to promote open source contribution like linux and promotes rapid growth so it became the open source community if you look at the github repos pytorch has 59k whereas tensorflow has 168k so this is because uh, tensorflow has first comer advantage so it released much before than the pytorch let us look the latest trend before going into further comparison what is the trend you see here you can see clearly that the pytorch has gained more popularity don't get biased soon there is a reason for this trend for that we need to see the journey of both the frameworks especially tensorflow's journey to understand the mistakes they have done even though tensorflow has the first comer advantage the syntax of it was actually complex if you consider the older version of tensorflows there are so many rules we need to follow this is a sample code which is doing the arithmetic operations but the code looks a bit complex so you need to understand the concept of session here otherwise you can't understand if you don't keep this particular statement you won't get any output getting calculated here so this session concept is not very easy to digest for the beginners this was the case for tensorflow 1.x versions all 1.0 versions follows this particular syntax so there is no doubt it is actually versatile and it is much easier compared to cafe as well as mxnet syntaxes but still it is not very easy for the beginner so as a beginner i want ease of use that is what exactly missing in this 1.x versions there are no high level apis to use which made it very hard to adopt for beginners this is exactly where the pytorch won people's heart let us look at this code now it is doing the same arithmetic operations so it is just initializing these things plus minus divided by these are enough it will calculate the output here so it is just like your python code or using numpy code right so for the ml beginner as a beginner for me it is very easy to understand compared to tensorflow code right also there are other concepts like uh, static versus dynamic graph between tensorflow and pytorch so which made it easy for pytorch to adopt for the research community basically the graph means model actually whatever the model or set of operations you are building it actually builds as a graph so in pytorch the graph is built dynamically whereas in tensorflow it is a static graph that means the moment you wrote a code for building the model or the set of operations linking that particular graph will be freezed so that is a static and during the model training later you cannot change the graph so that's the issue with the tensorflow so researchers started moving to pytorch what happens when researchers move to a new framework right as more and more researchers adopt the pytorch you have more number of papers coming in you have more number of open source repositories coming in and more people are being used especially beginners who take the open source repositories as the reference or use the pre trained models and open source repos for their projects right it's very easy so that way the trend has moved from Py tensorflow to pytorch then google realized that it is losing the game so it has released tensorflow 2.0 version if you look at this particular code it is just as simple as the pytorch code right but it has released in 2019 by the time it was too late but this 2.0 version has quite a lot of improvements it has added keras framework as part of it so tensorflow 2.0 came officially with the keras as part of it so keras is one of the popular uh, frameworks for the beginners right especially uh, keras is very easy to use it has lot of high level apis you can write 
the whole model implementation in very less number of uh, code so if you compare now at present the ease of use is more in tensorflow because of keras so if i want to build the model in tensorflow it is very easy using tf keras compared to pytorch so by integrating this keras so tensorflow has come up with both the capabilities so it is very easy to use for the beginners as well as it has more versatile control for the experienced users but then it's already too late pytorch is way ahead of the competition most of the research community you see that 2019 right so most of the community has already moved to pytorch by then so and uh, once i adopt a new framework pytorch doesn't have any drawbacks or anything compared to tensorflow which makes the people to come back to tensorflow right so the moment one switch to pytorch he will stick to it especially research community so that's why the trends show that the pytorch is leading uh, speaking of the trends let's look at some of them you can look at the trends from these websites so i have taken some reference websites like hugging face uh, horace website as well as papers and codes like this so let's see the hugging face website first so you can see that the number of models available in hugging face are 76k right whereas if i look only the tensorflow based models it is hardly 5k and if i look at the pytorch based models it's 45k so you can see that the more models are available open source models are available in pytorch in the same way let us look at this horace website so this is very good page where they were showing all the trends of the current papers in the research community which of the framework has more papers so basically these charts are showing the papers of different research journals or research conferences especially you can see the cvpr neural ips iccv all these things right so the graph is actually showing the growth of pytorch the percentage of pytorch papers compared to the total papers among tensorflow and pytorch so let's say i have 100 papers having both tensorflow and pytorch out of which 80% of the papers are in pytorch 20% are in tensorflow so it is like this and if you look at the trend here especially if you look at like maybe like uh, neural ips you take so the papers solid lines are actually pytorch and dotted lines are tensorflow you can see 2016 17 18 19 19 tensorflow was dominating but then pytorch the moment it released in 2016 at the end of the 2016 it has been growing continuously and if you look at the latest uh, trends pytorch has more number of papers percentage of papers compared to tensorflow the same thing you can see here almost like 78.72% so these are some of the trends and along with that one of the most popular website papers with code where people find the open source repositories at one place so in this also you can see that the trend is going towards pytorch so if you see the latest september 22 the pytorch portion the red color is in pytorch and the orange is actually tensorflow so the number of repositories in pytorch has been increasing and currently it is the most popular framework the more number of repos are available in pytorch but i have one question is this trend only because of the ease of use or any performance difference is there right let's answer that question if you look at the stats being published by pytorch they have showed that the throughput of pytorch is more compared to tensorflow across different models at the same time they showed that the training time also it is lesser but in fact the memory consumption was more compared to tensorflow but then these repositories have been developing a lot since then so these memory crashes memory requirements all those things might have been getting resolved in both the frameworks parallelly so i would say that initially there was performance differences pytorch claimed that they are faster compared to tensorflow but now you can say that most of them are their own pros and cons most of them are similar in the performances and bug fixes so we can't come to conclusion on this one as both of the frameworks are developing what about the ease of experimentation with the current improvements in the frameworks if you consider the latest versions of tensorflow and pytorch both of them have become a long way from fixing the bug fixes as well as improving their performances and having lot of compatibility things with the different domains and different uh, 
platforms etc so if you compare the current stage both of them are easy to use actually there is no there is nothing like one is better than the other only positive i would say it is the pytorch has more open source repos as we have seen in the trends also that is the only edge pytorch is having apart from that both of them are very easy to experiment in the current as for the current situation now let's see the ecosystem even here both of them have very good ecosystem so when you say about ecosystem in the ml community especially it it actually means that how good the framework is compatible across different domains how much support they are giving for different platforms and different pre trained models etc so in this case the ecosystem case both of them are winners here so there is nothing like one is ahead of another both of them are having good support across different domains like computer vision nlp audio 3d vision etc along with that they are having different tools supporting the cloud deployments etc speaking of deployment let's see how both of them are faring in the deployment phase in the deployment tensorflow is clearly ahead of the competition this is because these kind of toolboxes these are actually released recently until recently pytorch doesn't is not supporting the mobile as well as the embedded devices or edge devices whereas if you consider the tensorflow tf lite is one of the most widely used models in the industries from long time any edge analytics you see any analytics or any ml model running in the camera on the edge or inside a raspberry pi embedded device right definitely there will be a tf lite model running on it in most of the cases but pytorch also has been catching up with the support so as i mentioned recently they have released pytorch mobile support torch elastic all these different kinds of things and also not only these things the pytorch and tensorflow are backed by the giants they have been developing and promoting or growing the frameworks rapidly along with that there are other companies which is like nvidia or tensor which are actually developing tools like tensor rt or intel open vino even nvidia deepstream these tools are making it very easy for the ml community to use so because of these tools these kind of tools you need not to worry about which framework you are using whether you are using tensorflow or pytorch so as i mentioned you can actually convert from tensorflow to pytorch and vice versa via oen next there are a lot of tools available open source repos are available showing the examples and everything so you need not to worry about how you are which framework are you using for training the model and which framework are you deploying and nowadays mostly the deployment happens in tensor rt or deepstream frameworks so basically tensor rt is an optimized model if you are using gpu and uh, open vino you will use if you are using the cpu as a deployment so there are tools available like this now which is actually making the decision easier you need not to worry about which framework you are using it doesn't matter every framework both of these have very good support so choose the one which is being followed by your company or based on your client requirements i myself have faced some situation earlier like client was requesting only for tensorflow he is not okay with pytorch so similar requirements if any client is having you have to go with that particular framework otherwise it's fine it's your wish which you want to use so i have been using tensorflow from long time but now i started using pytorch because i shifted the job and my team here is working on pytorch so i had to shift to pytorch so at the end of the day it doesn't matter as of now with the current trend with both the frameworks supporting across different domains so i would say you can choose tensorflow or pytorch it doesn't matter if you are a very beginner you can go with tensorflow because it has edge of having keras as part of it so if you want to build only smaller models simpler models you can go with the tf keras which is very easy and it has very less learning curve compared to pytorch so these are the conclusions from my side and this is the current trend going on basically pytorch is being more used in the research community whereas in the productions tensorflow is being used so with that thank you so much for being patient with me so far bye